हेलो फ्रेंड्स थिंक ऑफ ए सिचुएशन व्हेन यू हैव जस्ट टेन और फिफ्टीन मिनट्स टू सॉल्व थर्टी क्वेश्चंस ऑब्जेक्टिव टाइप क्वेश्चंस इन्वॉल्विंग डेसिमल्स नाउ व्हेन वी थिंक ऑफ डेसिमल्स वी थिंक ऑफ लॉन्ग कैलकुलेशंस एंड कैलकुलेशंस व्हिच इन्वॉल्व अ लॉट ऑफ टाइम एंड एनर्जी टू गेट टू द आंसर इन दीज सिचुएशंस If you have some shortcuts up your sleeves, then it becomes easier to solve the question paper and save some time also. So today I am going to deal with some of the common questions which are asked in competitive examinations. And if you understand today's trick, you will be learning a lot. So the first type of calculation which I am taking is based on an algebraic identity. a square minus b square now whenever you have problems involving decimals these are the kind of problems which are very common now suppose i take an example of a having 7.35 square and we have the difference to be taken from 2.65 square now see if you start calculating the squares here you will consume a lot of time and your answer is not guaranteed to be correct so here you should know the basic identity of a square minus b square that is add once and subtract once normally when the paper setters give you this kind of questions they expect you to utilize some identity and arrive at the answer not by traditional multiplications so add once and subtract once whenever the squares of two numbers are subtracted then you have to add the two numbers and then subtract the two numbers now these two numbers normally which are given to you in competitive exams the sum of these two numbers is normally a round figure to arrive at the answer easily or the difference may be a round figure so here we observe that 7.35 and 2.65 add up to 10 so this is 10 and now you are left with only one small calculation of getting the difference of 7.35 and 2.65 which is 4.7 and now multiplication by 10 is very easy so 47 is your answer so you see we have not squared any number we have not multiplied 7.35 by 7.35 and so on so the same type of calculation can come in a, a little bit more difficult question like you have the same identity square of one number to be subtracted square of another number and in the denominator you have either the sum of these two numbers or the difference of these two numbers so that is given purposefully because suppose you have the difference of two numbers in the denominator now if you start calculating the squares and difference in the denominator and then divide the two you will consume not less than 1 minute to solve this problem but actually this problem needs just 5 seconds to arrive at the answer you must know this basic identity that whenever the squares of two numbers are subtracted then we add once and subtract once so if we add once and then if we subtract the same two numbers you will have two factors in the numerator and one of the factor is given in the denominator so this entire factor cancels out you don't have to find the difference here and the sum of these two will give you the final answer that is 20 so you see utilization of identities makes the job of calculation so easier when we deal with decimal problems let us take another identity which can come in competitive exams now i am coming to uh, one more identity this is say a cube plus b cube or a cube minus b cube again there may be questions which involve these identities like you will be given identity in the numerator and denominator will contain one factor which will come in the numerator also so that cancels out so you can work on those problems also once you know the basic concept of 
cancelling the common factor and arriving at the answer. Now, suppose I have one more problem. Say we are given 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3. These three numbers are multiplied twice and then 0 0.05 is multiplied thrice. So the, both the numbers are multiplied three times. And in the denominator also we have one number say 0 0.6, 0 0.6, 0 0.6 multiplied thrice and again one more number 0 0.1 multiplied thrice. Now traditional multiplication uh, will consume say about two minutes to uh, come to the final result but ultimately it is based on little bit of understanding that is such a big calculation cannot come in an objective paper. Obviously, there has to be a shortcut for solving these type of questions. So, if we observe that 0 0.6 is double of 0 0.3 and 0 0.1 is double of 0 0.05, then we can take a common factor of 2 from the denominator and we will have entire term the same as the numerator. So 0 0.3 and 0 0.05 three times. So this is a very very simple question which is given in uh, uh, competitives. But here we observe that we have taken two common but there were three terms here. So we have to take three common from all the three terms. So which gives us 2 raised to power 3. So if there are three terms and 2 is common in each, so 2 raised to power 3 will come out. And if there are two terms, then 2 raised to power 2 will come out. And remaining everything, the numerator will remain as it is. We don't have to make any kind of calculation in the numerator because this factor which is given in the numerator will ultimately cancel out with the factor which remains in the denominator and you will have the final answer as 1 upon 2 cube that is 1 upon 8 which is uh, in division mode it is zero, uh, when you divide it is 0 0.125 so you see no calculations just basic understanding of little bit understanding of decimals and common factors which can arise now let us come to one more simple problem of decimals which is quite frequently asked in the examinations say if we have we are given one calculation say 195.84 this is one uh, decimal which we are given and division of this with 20.4 the answer is given as 9.6 and this was the first one this was the second one we did this was the third one and now we are doing the fourth decimal calculation now we are given one division 195.84 divided by 20.4 is 9.6 which is already given to us and we are asked to find something different from this say first part now we are asked to find 19.584 divided by 2.04 we are asked to find this value similarly we can have different set of numbers having decimal place at different uh, points. I will take one more example, two more examples after this. Now the basic rule which we apply for this is when the decimal shifts equal number of places in both numbers and on the same side either on the left or on the right that is both number on the left or both number on the right i am taking a case here the decimal has shifted one digit to the left and here also the decimal has shifted one digit to the left whenever this shift is same in the two numbers then there is no change in the answer you will have the same answer 9.6 here also i'll take one more example of this say this is the original question I am shifting the decimal place one digit to the right. So 1958.4 divided by one digit to the right becomes 204. The answer will again be 9.6 because the shift in decimal place is same in both the numbers and on the in the same direction. 
So this is one rule you have to remember. You don't need to do any calculations. Just know the concept, know the shortcut, and write the answer. Now, when the shift is different or in different directions, then what happens? Now, for this, I'll take one example. Say same question. Original question is same. Now, suppose you are shifting the decimal one nine five eight four. I have shifted this decimal place two digits to the right. And in the other number, I make it 2.04, one digit to the left. Now, for getting the answer of these kind of problems, where the shift of decimal place is different in the two numbers, what you do is you apply a rule. Like for this, shift is positive. For this, shift is negative. See, I have shifted this. Towards the right, right. So number of places is two. So this is plus two. And for this, I have shifted one digit towards the left. So this is minus one, plus two and minus one. And this, these two shifts will be subtracted to get the net shift in decimal place. Now this is two plus two one. That is three. So there will be a shift of plus three. Now plus three means the original answer will have the decimal place shifted three digits to the right. So it becomes nine six zero zero. So you see a simple concept. If the digit, if the decimal place shifts towards the right. Then the shift is taken as positive of the number of digits to which the decimal place has shifted, and if this happens towards the left, then negative, and the number to which the decimal place has shifted, and then the subtra uh, subtraction sign is put is put in between to get the net shift in decimal place. If this net shift is positive, then we go towards the right, and if this net shift shift is negative, we come towards the left. So this is one more type of question which is asked in uh, normally in competitive exams. Now let us come to another decimal shortcut which is asked in exams quite frequently. Now this time I am going to deal with non-terminating and terminating decimals. Now suppose we have an example of a fraction, say 11 upon 40. And we have to find the decimal representation of this fraction. Now, for finding the decimal representation, there is one method. You can divide 11 by 40 and get to the result. But I am going to tell you one shortcut in which, without division, you can arrive at the decimal representation of any terminating decimal. Now, what you do is you make the factors of the denominator. 8 into 5 is 40. So 2 cube 8. Into five. I have factorized prime factors of the denominator. Now, in this denominator, there are two, 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 and five. Four factors. Three twos and one five. So what we do is we equalize the number of twos and number of fives. Two fives are less compared to twos. So what I do is I multiply and divide by five square. So that I have three twos and three fives in the denominator. That's all. Eleven into five square is twenty-five. Upon two cube into five cube becomes ten cube. And division by thousand can be done orally. Twenty-five into eleven is two seventy-five. Upon thousand, so answer is zero point two seven five. This is one of the very effective methods when you have to find the decimal representation of any fraction. Just convert the denominator into factors, equalize the number of factors, and in the denominator you will be left with the powers of ten, and it is very easy to divide with ten, hundred, thousand, and so on to get the decimal representation. Now the final part of this trick. Uh, there are some questions like evaluate and find x. There may be a variable given in the question, or you have to evaluate something. And this is either of the two. 
both will not come obviously so i'll take one example of this also say we have 255 now 255 is the base number which is given and all other numbers will have decimal place in between them uh, but the base number will be 255 only just like 0.255 and in the numerator we have say 25.5 and x now we are asked to find x in this calculation so here also what you do is you have to remove the base number from this calculation so 255 is a round figure in the denominator you have decimal and after decimal there are three digits so put a thousand in the numerator so you have to remove the decimal places so similarly here write the base number and you have decimal and one place after decimal so put it ten in the denominator now here you can cancel out the factors in the numerator and if if at all there is any factor in the denominator that also you can cancel out but here if you cross multiply 10000x will become equal to 255 so x will be 255 upon 10000 which is 0.0255 so you see decimals are not all that scary unless and until you have these kind of shortcuts up your sleeves and you know how a particular type of problem of decimals is to be handled you will end up landing into trouble spending a lot of time on decimals so students practice these methods keep learning keep enjoying and share and subscribe the video if you like it